Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who is wondering why their fiance hasn't shared their engagement news with his ex slash friend slash former emotional affair partner. But before we begin, <laughs> oh God. we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. I changed my whole opinion <laughs> on that letter in that in that five second I, yeah, summary. Yeah, when we were when we were debriefing this before, I, I was like, I, I think you're forgetting about some that. details about this. <laughs> yes, I forgot about that. I forgot about that one tiny detail. Uh-huh. Okay, well, before we get into it too much, um, Sam and I are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this, so please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings, so hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right, diving into today's letter, it is from Confused Fiance, whose pronouns are they, them, who are writing, who is writing to us from Uggville, USA. Hi, Sierra and Sam. So grateful for this podcast and feeling in need of y'all's compassionate and frank advice. Here's the situation. My partner, he, they, let's call him Owen, and I have been together for a little bit of over two years. I love our relationship. We had some tough times starting out, but have since grown a really strong, committed, and beautiful partnership that I feel safe in and like brings out the best version of ourselves. About a month ago, we got engaged. Yay. So what's the problem? Well, you know that tough time I mentioned starting out? I found out about six months into our relationship that my partner had been emotionally cheating on me with his most recent ex, let's call her Kim, she, her, a person with whom he had a complicated but very important to him three-year-ish relationship. There was nothing physical in the emotional cheating, but I found out they had exchanged a lot of lovey-dovey text messages and letters that made me really uncomfortable. I found this out because he had a love letter from her on his nightstand months into our relationship. Mind you, at this point, we had agreed to be monogamous months before and had also discussed what monogamy meant to us and came to the agreement that we both wanted the run of the mill monogamy and talked about what that meant to us. So this was clearly a breach of trust. After that, we went through a rough period, but were able to do some really important repair work that brought us closer than ever before. I feel uncomfortable about the idea of telling a partner that they can't have someone in their life. And Kim remains important to Owen, so they have continued a friendship, and I leaned into trusting Owen. Kim lives in a different city than us, but they text and phone, have phone calls often. Flash forward to now. When we got engaged, I immediately was ecstatic to share the news with my family and friends, including an ex of mine that I remain friends with. Owen also shared the news with their friend, extended family, and friends in a couple days following. However, they have not told Kim yet. I've asked him a few times whether he's talked to her lately or whether he's told her. They haven't had a phone call since our engagement, he says, as she's been traveling a lot, but says that they've texted several times about concert, day-to-day stuff, etc. I asked him why he hasn't told her, and he said that it just hasn't come up yet and that he would in time. Honestly, it's making me feel real weird. I don't think he's emotionally cheating on me, but I feel like if they're both truly at the point of being past the romantic relationship they had, he should be excited to tell her like I was to my friends and ex slash now friend, and she should be excited for him. Not sure how to navigate this with my partner or if I'm being too much here. I would love to hear your thoughts if I'm lucky enough to have this letter chosen, but either way, I'm just glad to get this off my chest and into the internet void. (laughs) That's cute. Thank you. Uh, All right. Confused fiance. Thank you for writing. Um, You know, I, I deeply understand why you're confused by this. You know, I think, um, you know, I agree with you that I don't think that your partner is like emotionally cheating on you anymore. And I can totally understand why the weird dynamics of his relationship with Kim and the fact that he's not telling her about you um, or about the engagement feels really weird. You know, like I think that there's lots of ways that folks navigate relationships with people that they once had feelings for that can be like not cheating, 
but that like just have like a different sort of tenor to them <laughs> that like isn't necessarily inappropriate, but can definitely feel a little off-putting. You know, like I don't think that you're like making up that it's weird that he's not telling Kim about the fact that you two are engaged, right? Like I think that that's really understandable. You know, I think Sierra and I um, have some like mixed thoughts about like what this is and how to navigate it. But I think the the one thing that I want you to know and that I want you to think about and hold is that I think you're, you're justified in feeling weird about this, right? Like, not like, oh my God, you should be throwing this relationship out the window or like, oh my God, take a chill pill. Like, yeah, there's like, weird doesn't mean anything, (laughs) but it, it, it matters. Absolutely. It matters. And, and you're not, you're not making up that the dynamic here is weird because of all of the history that's involved in this relationship, you know, both the relationship between Kim and Owen and also the reality of the relationship between you and Owen, which has had this like fraught period where they were, you know, going behind your back and doing things that were outside of the bounds of your relationship. And so I think Sierra and I want to kind of dig into some of that stuff and then offer some ideas about how to broach a conversation with Owen, not necessarily about like their relationship with Kim necessarily, but about how this is making you feel as their fiance, right? So we're gonna get into that in just a minute, but before that, we're gonna take a quick break. All right, my darlings, welcome back. And thank you to our letter writer for trusting us with this sticky question. First off, congrats on being in a happy, healthy relationship on getting engaged. Um, I think that's really exciting. And that is the foundation of a, lot of, of a lot of my advice today is that I want us to go back to the fact that you two are building um, a life together. You're choosing this life together and our actions can be reinforced by that surety. I think that this situation I've decided at first I was like, eh, I don't know. Uh, and then Sam's little intro <laughs> reminded me, <laughs> I think, I, I think I've, I've figured out the equation of this, of this letter of this question. It is a little bit of a yes. And situation, but it's mostly a come on bro situation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I want I wish that Owen had written this letter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. I'd be um, like, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's the, here's where the yes and situation could come in to the equation. Your feelings are incredibly valid to feel weird, especially with the given history, especially like, especially because as outsiders, we are over here with you being like, mm, this doesn't make sense. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for sense. We're looking for like, all right, well, if you've talked to everybody else, why, you know, we're trying to make sense of it, whatever. Um, but the yes and is your feelings are valid and some of his might be too. And let me explain. I don't know how he feels. I don't know what his communication style is. I don't know how he wants to have this conversation with somebody who might be important to him. You know, like we honor our are people in our life in different ways. Um, I know that when I got engaged, there were people that I wanted to share that news with in a very specific way. Uh, Not that I held a candle for them, not that I held the door open for them at all, but it was just like a nod to the respect that I have for our history and how I wanted to share this new part of my life with them. It was literally nothing to do with like, I'm sorry, I'm closing this door on you. (laughs) You know, like it was more just like, I, you know, I could, I told Sam and Spencer by sending them a picture of my ring. Whereas like, I think an important ex of mine, I was like, Hey, I wanted to share an important thing of my life with you. You know, whatever. It's different. There's different ways we communicate with different people. And you know who, what, like let's get let's humanize him a little before I tear him down. Maybe he is a little nervous, right? Maybe he feels really happy and fulfilled in that friendship, but he knows that Kim might treat him differently now that she knows this. Who knows why? We don't know. I'm just I'm literally I'm making things up here. But like maybe he or like I don't know, maybe he's conflict averse or maybe I fuck I don't know, man. Uh, there's a million reasons. Um so there it is a little bit of a yes such, yes and situation in that um, the way that you tell your loved ones and your and the way that you communicate this news it's not going to be a perfect um, imprint a matching imprint you know it's not going to be like 
100% the same as you approach your relationships because you're different people and you have different relationships sure. and different communication styles and whatever. <clears throat> um, so it's some of that, but it's mostly, come on, bro. Like <laughs> there, you might feel a little, like he might have literally no feelings for Kim and he is just being lazy, but he's, he is making you feel weird. He's, he's doing something that actively makes you question him, which given his history, I just want to be like, come on, bro. Here's a great opportunity. Like, first of all, I'm proud of him that you guys got engaged. Like, I think I'm proud of both of you for getting engaged because I think it's cool that you're choosing each other, that you are committing to each other in this way. Like, I think it's powerful to commit to each other in that way. And he's missing an opportunity here to be like, to, to, to show you how excited he is to commit to you in this way. And that's where I'm getting a little less really? empathetic with him. Yeah, that's real. Um, you know, I also think that like, as somebody who um, was a emotional affair partner for somebody who was in a relationship in my twenties. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> uh, one of the ways that we kind of navigated uh, us like trying to be friends after like we kind of died down the emotional affair was not talking about our personal lives with each other. Yes. Right. Cause it was yes. like, we didn't want to evoke jealousy in the other person. And also like, I don't know, it just felt like we, we couldn't figure out how to talk about relationships in a way that didn't like make us feel weird. And so all we did was talk about like, interests we had in common Logistics. you know like absolutely like uh yeah. what concerts we wanted like that's how we navigated it right and i think one of the things that helped me kind of put that friendship to bed even though like you know by the end we were not we were not engaged in any sort of like bad behavior but i just was like this is clearly not a person for me who can be like fully integrated into my life because like i feel so uncomfortable talking to them about my life which is like not great I totally agree. <laughs> you know what i mean i think that is such a i'm so glad you brought that up because i know i've had relationships like that and you're totally right there that's a litmus test like can you talk to this person about all aspects of your life that's a friend right yeah absolutely or like and why am i keeping why, don't why am i keeping this so hush hush <laughs> it's so weird it's yes, stupid why am i doing is, this yes exactly so i do like i yes. relate and to I have, go ahead yeah no, no, you're about to say it. Okay. And so I like relate to and empathize with Owen because I'm like, oh, I see that, you know, and again, I'm like, I'm putting my own patterns onto them and I don't know I if agree. that's actually true, so but like, I agree. but this is like, this is what I'm seeing there. And, and that's why I'm like, I don't think that they're having an emotional affair. Like, I don't think that anything is happening, but I do think that this relationship has a lot of like edges and boundaries to it because of the, the way that it has existed, the things that it has gone through. And, and I can understand from your perspective as well, confused fiance, like why that would be so challenging for you. Um, and, you know, I think that it is probably worth having a conversation with Owen about how this is landing on you. And I, and again, I, I really appreciate the idea that you're like, I don't want to tell him that he can't be friends with this person, right? Like, you know, they get to make decisions about what relationships they have in their life as long as they're within the bounds of the relationship the rules of our relationship and you can also say like it strikes me as odd that you're not talking to her about this big thing right like it makes me it makes me feel like you know you're keeping me a secret from this person or it makes me feel like you know you're not excited about this with them and and i don't think that anything's wrong i just like it's something that i'm noticing about your relationship with her or it's something that i'm noticing about how this is landing on me, right? Like, I think it's one of those things where you can kind of name what's coming up, like name the experience of it without being like, so fix it, right? But instead mean like, I just want you to know this, right? Like, or this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm experiencing about it. And I don't necessarily think anything's wrong or that you're being bad or any of that. It's just like, this is this is what I'm noticing. This is how it's landing on me. That's the, that's the phrase I learned from you is like, I don't think you're anything is going on, but the fact that you haven't told her yet is making me uncomfortable and making me feel like you're prioritizing her whatever. feelings over the excitement about our relationship. <laughs> right? Yes. Like <laughs> and, and, and it's making me, unco it's making me feel bad. Like that's at the end of the day, it's, it's, oh man, that it makes me feel bad. And the, the 
the way I know that this is right and valid is because I often, you know, my wife is very, very pragmatic, very giving. Um, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't like coddle my emotions, <laughs> me, <laughs> my big feelings, uh -huh. but she really makes space for them. Mm. Um, and if I ever ask her for anything that, that is within the realm of reason, she would give it to me, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, if this makes you uncomfortable, let me do this or whatnot. And I can picture this scenario unfolding and me saying, it doesn't make me feel good that you haven't told her yet. She would be like, okay, I'll just tell her right now. Like <laughs> it's done. <laughs> For sure, that's, yeah. that's what it would be. Um, and that's, that's not to put my wife on any pedestal or like, um, I don't think, I truly don't think and this is just like my inconsistent intuition <laughs> that can't be trusted. But I don't think Owen, I don't think anything's going on here. He's choosing you. You know, you are building a life together. I believe in that life. And also, I want him to see what a simple act it could be to make you feel so grateful and secure in that relationship. It, it's, it's within... You know, I also want to say, like, to the letter writer, you're not overreacting here because you are a person with the emotional maturity to say, I, I'm not going to ask you to kick this person out of your life or I don't need you to not talk to her anymore. I feel secure in our relationship. Like, you're exhibiting a lot of emotional maturity in your relationship in many ways. You're not, like, flying off the handle here. You're not being deeply insecure and, and destabilized. You're literally just having your feelings hurt, and you deserve to celebrate in this engagement and feel secure in it. Like, your fiancé is just doing, a, is not doing a little thing that could make you feel really great. And it, that, to me, is worth asking for from your future life partner. Absolutely. Yep. And I think, like, you know, it sounds like you two are practicing intentional monogamy and you're also trying to do the practice of demonogamizing your understanding of relationships right where you're talking about what does monogamy actually mean for us what's what's inside of it what's outside of it and you being there saying like and just because we're monogamous doesn't i mean i have ownership over you and all of your relationships right like you are sitting in this place of being like i am trying to navigate what it looks like to have to, to sort of be okay with an un, a relationship that makes me kind of uncomfortable sometimes. And so part of that is recognizing that, yes, you're doing things differently, which means that discomfort is going to come up sometimes, right? Our discomfort about relation the relationship, our discomfort about trying something new out that is not 100% monogamy, I own you and every relationship that you have. And the discomfort doesn't necessarily mean we're doing something wrong, but the discomfort does deserve to be tended to, right? It deserves to be acknowledged. It deserves to be seen and heard because tapping into that discomfort, understanding that discomfort can help us move into a more sort of like demonogamized frame of mind. But if we're like, oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable and I don't have the right to, then we're not actually tending the things that need tending to us for us to be able to exist in a place where we can have trust, where we can begin to understand that we don't get to own each other, right? Like you need the psychological safety to be able to say, ooh, that, that's crunchy, right? And for him to be like, okay, that's crunchy, interesting. Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out together without it being like a, an either or situation, right? Like being able to sit in and understand and dig into that discomfort helps to make these types of relationships that are, that are again, like I think outside of the bounds of like what typical heterosexual monogamy <laughs> would look like, you know, like the idea that we have of what people are supposed to be doing in marriages, in relationships, but we need to be able to build up those muscles to be able to talk about and, and engage in that discomfort when it comes up, because that's the actual work of demonogamizing, right? Like that's where the actual rubber hits the road in this. And so you, I think you are well within your rights to say, nothing bad is happening, right? Like no one is at fault here, but this is crunchy, right? Like this is making me feel a type of way. And for the both of you to figure out like, what's your job to manage in your discomfort? And what is their job to help say like, okay, crunchiness, I can understand. Here's how I can help support you in this crunchiness, right? Here's how I can help you feel better about it. And it can be both of those things at the same time. It doesn't have to be just one or the other. I think that's, that's a home run. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love a sports Good. metaphor too, you know? 
<laughs> All right, confused fiance. Thank you so much for writing to us. Um, you know, we can totally understand why this is is something that's making you a little bit uncomfortable. And we hope that we offered you some validation, some support, and some concrete advice about how you can navigate this in partnership with Owen, not in competition with him. I mm, love that. We love you. We hope this helps. Thank you so much for writing. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us uh, or if you would like to join us for our monthly office hours, you can support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get access to those monthly office hours. This is when Sierra and I hop on Zoom and just talk to people who want to talk to us it's and so join fun. us on the Zoom. It's like super fun, super engaging, an amazing time. Uh, please join us. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship meme, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his music and podcasts. And remember, security and trust isn't found by swallowing your own needs and concerns. Security and trust is grown from inviting people in to process those feelings, um, to grow stronger in the crunchiness, and to work together towards that peace. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>